Thank you, Barry, for the kind words. Um, there's no turning back now because it's all documented what he said about me, right? Um, in all seriousness, though, Barry, thank you. Thank you for not only leading the rescue mission for the past 36 years, but Barry, how you've led. You have been a vessel for the Lord by being a voice for those who are often misunderstood and overlooked. You have strived to foster strong, trusting relationships and partnerships within our community to take care of those who belong to this community. Following in your footsteps doesn't really scare me, Barry, but what it does do is it drives me to be the best version I can be because our staff, our donors, our volunteers, our guests, and our homeless neighbors deserve it. To the board members, and how thank you. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity. Thank you for being so supportive from your prayers, to the questionings, to the examination of what's next for the rescue mission. You all have been a very big blessing to me, and I'm very, very thankful for that. To my husband of 11 years, who's in the back of the room, Jared, Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for telling me when I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm so thankful for you, and I'm incredibly grateful to have you walking alongside me in the next part of this journey. We are also blessed with two daughters who are very big troopers for sharing their mama with others. And I tell you, they have truly grown in their little faith and their understanding of the importance of loving people since I've become here to the rescue mission than ever before. To the staff, words almost seem inadequate when I go to express my gratitude for the work that you come and do every day. On one hand, I understand how special this ministry is and I understand what a blessing it is to be a part of it, but on the other hand, I also truly understand the huge load that you carry every day by working extra because of the staff shortages that we're facing, that the nation is facing. And I also understand the incredible load you carry day in and day out when you see the broken and the hurt because of a variety of causes. Aside from our Father, staff, you are the backbone of our ministry. And not only are you the backbone, you're also the heart. I am blessed and honored to be able to work alongside you in this ministry. To our donors and to our volunteers and our partners in the community, I want to extend a big thank you. Because without what you all do, TRM would not be able to thrive like it does. Without you, we couldn't reach people. We couldn't help transform people. People wouldn't be fed. Housing wouldn't be made available. Healing wouldn't be happening. And needs would go unmet. It's an exciting time at TRM. And I know together we will continue to make our part of the world better. Lastly, I would like to speak to those who are watching or listening, who are current guests, past guests, people that might be scared right now because they are going to be coming to the rescue mission, and those who are our homeless neighbors. You matter. You are seen. You as a human being matter more than any circumstance you are facing. Don't give up. Know that you are loved, regardless of your past, your present, and know that I, along with everyone else here at TRM, are very grateful to be a part of your restored future. Thank you. Thank you, Lamanda. Last year, we formed a 
transition committee. And uh, I was uh, a little surprised when I first heard Barry say, one of our own board members uh, maybe should be considered for the next director. And uh, the blessing of all this is that the board unanimously voted to have Lamanda as the next uh, executive director of the rescue mission. But if you don't remember anything I say, remember this. Barry's not going anywhere. <laughs> Every time I mention this, they say, Barry's retiring? No. We've got his plate full already. And he's going to be working in the community just like he's been doing, only we're freeing him up from the day-to-day -day operation in order to have him up and being able to serve the community better than ever. And I am thankful for that. And I'm thankful for this transition. Barry and I have talked about this for several years now, that this day would come. And we're looking forward to the future. And God bless Barry and God bless Amanda and this rescue mission. Thank you. Thank you, Hal. Again, uh, thank you all for coming. Um, in conclusion today, um, I mentioned about the expiration date on the canned goods. Um, we all have an expiration date, and some of you are going, uh oh, he's going to preach. No, <laughs> not going there today. But when we look at something that's been around a while, and maybe it served its purpose, and we need to replace it, we want to make sure it's new and improved. And I believe that of all the good things that have happened with Topeka Rescue Mission, new obviously. Actually, she uh, was born a year after I started working here. So that's very new. Uh, and I believe improved. And uh, so um, all of the community know that you've been such a great part of uh, my time here sheltering over 60,000 people, serving millions of meals and all kinds of programs. It's been amazing. But yet the future and what we need to do in this community, uh, the job isn't done. And there's more people in need than ever. And so new and improved um, is what we have now that will be coming, and uh, I just pray and ask you to support Lamanda and the Board of Directors and this ministry as it goes forward to go out on the streets and find people who are broken, invite them in, get them into housing, get them into job training, get them into mental health services, address their addiction, but more importantly than anything, let them know that they matter. So thank you for being here to help uh, spread that word that everybody matters. With that said, uh, Hal, Amanda, you want to come up here and see if there's any questions? Uh, media has a press packet, media packet, whatever they call that thing now. Anyway, it's stuff in there, and Amanda's bio is in there as well. You'll see um, her accomplishments. How many buildings does the mission maintain? So, Tim, right now, uh, major buildings are five. Um, that includes two shelters, the, uh, the distribution center, the warehouse, as well as the Children's Palace here. Um, and then we have some other uh, smaller uh, buildings. And the board consists of eight members? Right now we are eight. Uh, we um, um, will be having uh, right. some other board members come on board um, this year. Yes. <laughs> well. We did it well. Again, we'll, uh, we'll be here. Uh, if any media sources want to uh, ask us questions, uh, Lee? Can you tell us a little bit more about what your role will be going forward? Um, I'm not sure. Um, Hal hasn't figured that out yet. So uh, um, I will be um, staying uh, involved with Topeka Rescue Mission um, in uh, the areas, and it's, it's in the packet, kind of what we're thinking at this point providing some spiritual support um, to the different uh, entities within the rescue mission, staff, volunteers, our guests, um, our supporters, uh, that arena. Um, also, uh, looking at strategic development items. Um, this is one of the things the Peak Rescue Mission has done is we've been uh, um, a strategic uh, ministry, uh, looking at what the latest is. Uh, we don't know what's coming our way. Um, uh, we didn't know a pandemic was coming. So we had to be very strategic about making adjustments very quickly. Operation Food Secure was one of those things that birthed up out of that, that fed uh, 
110,000 people in 10 counties in Northeast Kansas on a spur over a period of about 18 months, Mary, I want to say, with 500 volunteers. Um, just amazing, partnering with the USDA to be able to do that. That strategy, uh, God really provided us with the strategy, but we stepped up. Um, MAP, Mobile Access Partnership, that's another strategic outreach to the unsheltered homeless in our community. The rehousing program is a new strategy. Uh, we uh, were able to rehouse 110 households uh, last year uh, to move people from homelessness into permanent housing. So we'll be continuing to look at that. And then the other thing I'll um, do um, is be an advisor, to give my opinion, uh, to the director. <laughs> Plus, the bottom line of what it is, so what I think. <laughs> I'll be answering to the director, not the board of directors anymore, but the director, she'll be answering to the board of directors, and just uh, try to be a cheerleader for uh, this community. Um, uh, we've had other people come here and say, man, Topeka's different. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we're part of a network of 300 rescue ministries in North America, and uh, it's called the City Gate Network. Uh, it's just an association, but they look at rescue missions, and they have recognized Topeka as being unique and uh, when one major city um, was looking to uh, go to um, different cities to learn from them, they asked for the 10 top ones in their opinion. And uh, we were listed as number two out of 300 in the, uh, in the country. Of course, I asked who was number one. <laughs> <laughs> they said Star Hope in Houston. I think um, we became goal. number one after they visited. Oh, yes, oh, yeah, so that so. changed. Yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> we're still working on it. <laughs> but again, it, it's about this city and you know, every city, every, every group of family always has their stuff, right? Uh, nothing's perfect in this world. But in spite of all that, we got people who care. And people are going, how in the world do you do all those volunteers? That's why the, uh, we got a call from um, the USDA and from World Vision and others, and they said, we hear you guys know how to network volunteers. Can you use a bunch of food coming from the <laughs> USDA to be able to feed people at the beginning of this pandemic? And we said, we'll give it a try. And it turned in over 4 million pounds of food that was distributed in those 10 counties and 110,000 different people who were fed that wouldn't have been fed otherwise. And so what does that say? It says we got a great community. Mm -hmm. People stepped up and they said, we want to help. So, Lee, that's my long-winded answer about <laughs> what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a part of the excitement of what's going to happen yeah. next. What was the best thing about having this job? That's a great question, mm -hmm. Tim. Um, Board. The board, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, th there were so many great things about it. I, I think that the, uh, I'm changed. I'm not the same guy I was 36 years ago. And uh, I think part of that is um, the, what I've learned from the homeless, the poor, the broken. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, Incredible people who give sacrificially to do what they do. I, mean, we, I wrote one book. Um, hope to do another one sometime. Just talk about all these amazing people that step up and, and want to join on to, to be there, um, to stand in the gap. Uh, you know, there's, there's people who have been out on the streets for decades, um, and they work here now. <laughs> uh, former methamphetamine addicts mm -hmm. and, and that kind of thing, and, and learning from them and learning from the heart of people who care so much. And you know, I, I, yeah, I've been the director um, and get a lot of credit. I don't deserve the credit. She won't deserve the credit. Um, but she will be who God uses to bring a lot of credit together. And uh, we got a lot of reasons to be happy with this community. So what I've learned then, the thing that probably pleased me the most, is we got a, a God who really cares. I'm, I'm gonna throw out all the religious dogma, you know, uh, let's get down to the, the basic. He loves, he cares, and he tells us to turn around and do the same. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, to see that, yeah. love your neighbors yourself, is happening here. Mm -hmm. That's what has probably been the greatest thing. Early on during your time as mission director, you and Stan Friedman went to another city and um, were homeless, essentially, for yes. a while. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Stan Friedman was Capital Journal. Uh, he uh, kind of really got uh, uh, interested in the homeless issue, to say the least, and he came to see me. He was my first interview um, with the uh, media, and uh, um, and so that was in Capital Journal before I started. I remember him calling me and saying, hey, we want to interview you about your coming to the rescue mission. I said, why? Mm -hmm. I never knew that this was going to be involved. I just thought, I'm going to go do a job. I didn't know it was going to be uh, front page stuff and on TV and all that, so I was a little scared. But anyway, he came to me one day, and he said, 
about a year after I'd been here, he said, you need to experience homelessness yourself. And I said, yeah, you're right, I really do. Um, I work with the homeless, but I need to be homeless for a while. And so uh, I said, okay. He said, I'll join you. And I said, great. You want to go down by the Capitol? We go down the Kansas Avenue Bridge? He said, no. We need to go somewhere where you don't know anything about anything. He said, let's go to Chicago. And so we hopped the plane and hit the streets of Chicago. It was only three days. But, wow, did I learn a lot through that experience. Yeah, we'll unpack everything I learned in that time, but I came back going, okay, I get it now. What people go through just mm -hmm. trying to survive mm -hmm. for only three days, not three months, not mm -hmm. three years, not three decades. And I had a whole lot more empathy with people mm -hmm. when I went back. So, Mama, can you talk about your um, top priorities when you put these positions? Sure. I think um, first and foremost, just really being obedient to the Lord um, on whatever plans He has for us. You know, I think it's important to. Um, keep things that are foundationally here, here, and not change those. Uh, but I also think that if things need to be revised to better meet the needs of what we're seeing on the streets and guests coming in the shelter, then we need to do so as well. One thing that's on my radar right now is really taking care of staff. Um, you know, building morale and culture, and um, they just have a lot on their plates. And so just being reminded that our first block is our staff because we've got to pour into them so that they can then go and pour out to others as well. Another thing that's big on my radar is we are seeing an increase in um, geriatric needs coming into the shelters, um, medical needs that we, to be honest, are not equipped for, but we want to take care of these people the best way we can. And so looking at what partnerships we need to start creating um, so that we can get them better care than just staying inside of a rescue mission. I want to hurry up and get that geriatric wing ready. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of her daughters uh, said, hey, uh, mommy's getting your job. <laughs> and I said, well, if I have no place to go, can I come to your house and live mm -hmm. and bring my dog Remy? They cheered. Yes, yes they, they said yes. I think did. it was about Remy, <laughs> yeah. not about Barry. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> anybody else? Yeah, uh, one last thing. When we watch television, or sometimes read a book about homelessness and hunger and poverty, it's the Hallmark version. Mm -hmm. This is not pretty. This is broken, broken, broken. Um, I think our community is beginning to embrace that. When she mentioned the staff and, and key volunteers, they're in the trenches day to day with issues and problems that as a society we haven't figured out how to take care of. And so people fall down and end up at our doorstep or out on the streets and just don't leave them there. We go there to try to help them in the midst of their brokenness. The war on poverty started in 1964. $22, 23000000000000 trillion dollars spent so far to try to eradicate it. It's not eradicated. When we go beyond band-aids, when we go beyond wanting it just to be better, and we get there and go there where they are, and we suffer with them, and that's what our staff and volunteers do, they suffer with people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they get spit on. Mm -hmm. They get stuff thrown at them. Mm -hmm. Death threats. Because people are in a, in a traumatic situation. But our staff are trying to learn why. And they're trying to be there for them and wrap their arms around them and give them another chance and another chance and another chance. Mm -hmm. One of our staff members here came in and out of the rescue mission a hundred times mm -hmm. over two decades. Yeah. And now he is a great ambassador because people don't give up. So when Amanda says, you want to pour into these folks? It's not the romantic version. Mm -hmm. It's because they're on the front lines of this. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, uh, let's remember that. And, uh, and thank you to everybody who supports these folks. Barry, I'd like to say something on that same line. For 10 years before joining the board, I spoke at the chapel services and on a regular basis. And every time I'd go in and speak, go back to my car, 
and sat in my car and some homeless person would walk out and I'd look at Juan Chalicom who was at that time on the board and I'd say except for the grace of God there go I there's people out there right now just a step away from needing the rescue mission we've got a tremendous job to do and we thank God for this community that accepts us in the work that's done and it's because of our community that we're able to do the work that we do. Amen. We are blessed. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for being here. We'll be around for additional uh, questions if you have any. Also, there's information how to get a hold of Amanda, myself, or Kim Turley, who is our um, media uh, person for contact. Again, thank you for your support, and this really means a lot to us that you would uh, share this announcement. Uh, April 22nd, uh, there will be an event somewhere uh, sometime during uh -huh. that day to uh, unpack this even further. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.